What's up, Bug Doug with Dini in the Garage? I have gone on record and stated, you all know me, I believe that the greatest vehicles ever made are Jeeps from about 1987 to about 2006, give or take a few. But there's a problem with being wildly in love with 20 to 30 year old vehicles. Uh, one, you're gonna be getting well acquainted with the gas station attendant. Two, you're always gonna know where your vehicle is parked because there's gonna be oil spots everywhere. And three, stuff starts wearing out. <clears throat> I've owned more Jeeps than I can count from that time period and every single one of them had a steering wheel that does this. That's a lot of play for a steering wheel. Thankfully, there's a good way, a little bit of a hack to jimmy jam a little bit of this play out of your steering wheel to make your morning commute slightly less terrifying. Now, on those Jeeps in question, and actually on a lot of vehicles, uh, Dodge uses them, uh, Dodge trucks, uh, Eric's new Chevy has it. I mean, you find them all over the place. They're called Saginaw style steering boxes. It's a little more rugged than a rack and pinion. So you see them in a lot of trucks, SUVs, things that are meant to go off-road or do work or whatever have you, heavy things. Uh, and there are some drawbacks to them, but one of the nice things is they have this little adjustment point, this place where you can jimmy jam just a bit and take up some of the slack out of the worn out worm gear inside the uh, steering box. Uh, like I said, on your XJs, your ZJs, your YJs, your TJs, your WJs, your new Wranglers, you're gonna find it. It's gonna be obviously over here behind the steering wheel. Uh, in the case of most Jeeps, it's under the air box. I think Wranglers, your battery's here, right? Somebody with a TJ or YJ let me know. Either way, you have to remove whatever's in your way so that you can gain access to that steering box. Now in the case of this particular WJ, it's no big deal, you just Jimmy jam these guys out, uh, disconnect your little doodly watsits. It's pretty much the same on an uh, XJ or a ZJ. And I think TJs, you guys have the same style air box as an XJ, it's just on the other side, right? Uh, so remove whatever's in the way. Dodge truck, same thing. Um, even some independent front suspension vehicles, like Eric's new truck is independent front suspension, but it's got one of these. So you pop this guy out of the way. Put this guy over there. Ignore how dirty mine is inside. I actually, I never put the bolts back in because, oh, whatever. Uh, and then she just slides out, like a so. If you're new to the channel and you don't understand why you're seeing Romex in my Jeep, I got a video on that. Please just, I guess, leave me a comment down there. Everybody, nobody likes my Romex, but uh, it does the trick and it's been doing it for quite a while. Now that we sort of have access, it's actually a lot easier on the four liter than it is on the four seven like this unit, but we will persevere. All right, so you have gained access to your steering box. There it is. There's the ever present steering box leak. Definitely gonna deal with that someday, probably not. Right here's where the magic happens. You got a jam nut, that's five eighths. You got an adjustment screw. Uh, that is an Allen key or interior hex of three sixteenths. So grab you some of them and loosen the jam nut while keeping the adjustment screw in place. This is a whole lot easier on a four liter and it's a whole lot easier without a camera all up in your teeth. Once you got that jam nut loosened, you're gonna tighten the adjustment screw an eighth of a turn at a time. Look at me, an eighth of a turn at a time. Do an eighth, tighten everything down, take it for a drive, see how it feels. If you over tighten this, kaboom. You turn the steering wheel, kaboom. You're gonna have nothing but uh, Mardi Gras uh, confetti in there. You're gonna be real pissed. You're gonna be down in the comments talking about, did this and it blew up my steering box. Eighth of a turn at a time, maybe even less. If you only have a little bit of play, do a 16th of a turn. What do you got to do today, right? A Little bit of, at a time, take it around the block. It will be immediately apparent if you have tightened it too much, you need to stop immediately. Don't wait till you get home. Stop right where you are and loosen it back off a little bit because you will, this thing will go pop and then you got to get to the junkyard or you got to buy a new one. They're not cheap, new. All right, back to the show. All right, so we're doing our eighth of a turn, maybe even less. And then without messing up your adjustment, flip, dang it, uh, go ahead and tighten up your jam nut again. Make sure it's good and tight. All right, and put everything back in so you can take it for a test drive. If you're unsure, you may even want to uh, leave some of this off if you think you maybe over tightened it. That's, that's up to you. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. And then you gotta take it for a test drive. Get out on the road, turn the radio down, and uh, listen and feel. You're gonna feel vibration in the steering wheel and you're definitely gonna hear it if you overdid it and if you overdid it I'm telling you pull over right away and click her back a couple couple stints of a turn um, because you will 
make that box go pop and then you're gonna have a bad day. I usually keep the tools with me on the, on the shotgun seat there for a few days after doing this and I'll make little tweaks here and there. Now, the other thing you need to note is that this is one of about 30 places where your 200,000 mile Jeep has play in the steering. So it's not all of a sudden gonna feel like a brand new BMW. You're gonna take a little bit out. And then maybe you can do, do ball joints, you can go do tie rod ends, you'll take a little bit more out. Uh, you know, the whole system, I mean, there's, there's just play in the system. These Jeeps have been around the block, they've been uh, used and abused, rode hard and put up wet. And by the time you get it, yeah, man, it feels like uh, sloppy salad in the steering wheel there. Uh, so we are hoping to just be able to take a little bit of that out today. Uh, don't have, temper your expectations, right Jojo? Tell them, temper your expectations. Uh, but it does make a difference. In fact, in my um, my tan WJ with the four liter, it made a huge difference. Now in this one, it didn't actually make that much of a difference. What helped this one, y'all remember last winter, I redid the whole front end. It cost me about 500 bucks to do everything. Ball joints, control arms, uh, tie rod ends, everything up there redid it, this thing drove like new. Uh, highly recommend that. If you have one of these old Jeeps and you daily it, try to put aside a couple dollars from the beer fund uh, to get you some tie rod. Every Jeep I've ever bought had completely beyond gone tie rods, ball joints, wheel bearings. Nobody ever does this stuff and you wonder why they ride like crap. Uh, I'm here to tell you, tell them Joe. Tell them, tell them what they need to do. Uh, so, anyway, that's really about all there is to it. If you got any questions, by all means, leave me a comment down there in the squawks. As I highly suggest, if you have the means, go ahead and pick up one of these old Jeeps, bring it home, give it a little bit of love, uh, tighten up the steering box, replace a few parts, and you will have yourself an absolutely delightful, reliable, capable vehicle. Got any questions down there in the squawk boxes? If you like the video, like the video. That's just common sense. Uh, Maybe even consider subscribing to the channel and go and check us out on Etsy. Uh, our Jeep Ugly Christmas sweaters are selling now. You don't want to be the only guy at the office Christmas party without a Jeep Ugly Christmas sweater. Sorry, Joe. As always, thanks for watching. Say goodbye, Joe.